Welcome back to Blaster Master, cutting all the way back to Area 3 to save you from the backtracking. Uh, we're going to be continuing with plot, of course, so because there's nothing else to get, because I got everything. Woo. Yeah, I think that Area 3 has the most stuff in it that you can do with the wall climbing thing. Yeah. One thing that I thought was cool is, is that, like, right here, they combine, like, the tread mechanic from earlier with having you do that while on the wall, which, I don't know, yeah. I thought that was neat. You see... Rolling your wheels to make something beneath you move while remaining stationary doesn't make any physical sense, and I love it. I mean, it kind of does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh... Well, I mean... Um... Yeah, if, 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 the, if the tires were literally attached to the actual treadmill, like in a groove or train set away, yeah, it could. Not while remaining completely stationary like that. Like, you would move... You might not move as much as the thing below you, but you would move. This made no sense in Sonic the Hedgehog, either. <laughs> uh, but, well, I mean, isn't uh, that the same kind of idea, like, when you're slipping on ice, though? Like, because you don't have any traction underneath it. You, 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 you move around the light. Like, if you're slipping on oil, it's probably a better analogy. The, the point is, the, the slower thing that's that's not, like, physically restricted is going to move it might affect the thing beneath it and move that as well in response but it was it, it was sure nice to immune to invent ladders yeah it, 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 you, you would need something else to lock the tank in place in order for the wheels to move the thing without moving the tank i'm just gonna assume that that kind of oh this part oh I... Oh What's God. this now? Stealth? Stealth section, yeah. Stealth? The, the, it, well, not entirely. You don't, you don't have to. It's incredibly annoying if you don't, though. Yeah. Stealth in a tank. That's... Wow. Metal Gear... That's, that's Metal Gear Solid, right? Metal, I mean, metal Slug you, Solid? <laughs> no, I mean, there's, there's, there's a tank in Metal Gear. Yeah, yeah, but you're not the one driving it. You're not the one driving it, and there is no stealth involved whatsoever. <laughs> but we still have, we still have to destroy the Shago Hut. Um, you see, I don't. I was gonna say I don't always mind when they shoehorn stealth mechanics into a game, but that's kind of a lie because I usually do. I, it depends on how fast paced the game is already to begin with. Because if it's something slower, then I usually won't get too upset, but this isn't really... I remember not liking it in the in this game very much like, at all. Like I said, it's not like you have to do it. There was a it's, 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 it, it makes it extremely easier, though, especially when you're doing some of the, uh, the overhead stuff. You basically need to do it stealth mode. I needed to, at the very least, in order to not die. There was a point in time... Uh, during the PlayStation era, PlayStation N64, where games all had to have, like, really basic stealth things. And it wasn't Metal Gear Solid that kicked it off. I remember that. I remember it was before that. It was like, you know, Ocarina of Time has its stupid little... God oh, damn. I hate the Ocar The Ocarina of Time stealth section, for some reason, irritates me more than a lot of the other ones. <laughs> Yeah. No idea don't go why. In, don't, go in there, don't go in that cave. That's just a resupply area. Yeah, and there's like there's the uh, you know a lot a lot of little stuff like that. And it might have been Thief actually on the PC. Hold on, I'm, I need to look up when that came out. Um, that might have been what started the trend, but the upshot was we got a lot of bad stealth, and that trend continued well into the PS2 era. <laughs> um, Metal Gear Solid probably didn't help. <laughs> oh, actually, no, that's wrong. Thief came out in 98, which was way after, so... Ah. Yeah, no, I, no idea why stealth... Why everybody had to think that we needed a stealth section in every video game. Well, but... in the 90s, there was a strong push to make games more mature. And, well, a lot of that manifested in 90s edgelord bullshit. But, um, it also manifested in uh, experiments with alternative playstyles that de-emphasized violence. And that's partly why Mist was so successful when it came out, is because it was a it was a it was, it was a quiet, slow paced explorative puzzler with zero combat and zero death. Um and that got a lot of non gamers and a lot of adults in particular into the medium. The b bullshit stupid simple stealth elements were another symptom of that, I think. 
E, yeah, I'd also, I don't know, I think for a lot of games, it also had some stuff to do with really wanting to have variety Yeah. in games, because I feel like in a lot of RPGs and, um, in a lot of RPGs and platformer games, you know, it was just like, there's, especially for stuff made for kids, because I remember, like, Paper Mario has the stealth chapter, uh, in chapter three, which thankfully isn't too egregious. But it's just like, okay, we need to make this chapter different from all the others. How do we do that? Uh, let's make it the stealth one. It was a <laughs> relatively easy way to differentiate stuff. So they often did that, I kind of found. Okay, now here, here's where the stealth is kind of needed. Why Why the hell are we... Yeah, these... Okay, yeah, it was, it's definitely the overhead stuff. Yeah, because in the tank you can survive just fine. Why the hell are we suddenly playing goddamn uh, uh, Chex Quest? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do our guns teleport the enemy away here too? Uh, yeah, t they teleport them to the to the explodey realm. That th yeah, that was the thing about Chex Quest. It was it was nonviolent doom. <laughs> yeah. I what well, I, I don't. Well, well, then, then you well then you turn on the uh, brutal Chex Mex Chex Mex uh. Mod. You see, the thing I, I love that I love that I love that that exists. The thing I want to know is why does everybody in in like, uh, like, forced stealth sections in video games? Why does everybody have no peripheral vision and terrible terrible hearing? Because you can stand right behind someone and walk around in your clunky ass super armor and then deal like and they they don't see you. You're ten feet away and they don't see you. Like, what's up with these guys? Uh, because the the it's supposed to be simple, you know. It's supposed to be easy if you, if you to gave, if, grasp. If you, well, if you gave if you gave enemies like actual peripheral vision and ears and all that, they would spy you all the time, and you wouldn't have much stealth, now would you? It depends. Um, like the stealth in say an Elder Scrolls game does exactly that, and it it comes down to like how good your character is at being quiet and all of that. And it works for that kind of game, but that's also very involved and takes a lot of time. <laughs> like, when I stealth around in an Elder Scrolls game, it takes me probably half an hour to get through a section that uh, a gung-ho warrior class character would get through in like 10 minutes. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, the, and most stealth games make you rather do the stealth be by making their combat not bad <laughs> on purpose metal gear solid anyone well it depends on the metal gear solid game you play because isn't like what's it metal gear solid 2 like isn't the the combat so good that you not, oh not, wait not you know what two. i'm thinking of i'm thinking of Four. uh what i'm thinking of i'm actually what i'm thinking of is a lot of the reviews of uh, the remake of Metal Gear One, of uh, Metal Gear Solid One, on the oh, that GameCube. wasn't that wasn't a matter well, of the combat being good. That was a matter it was, of it was the ca camera. Yeah, yeah. The, the Metal Gear Solid One was not designed for first person shooting. In the original Metal Gear Solid One, you could not shoot in first person, which means you couldn't shoot anything you couldn't see on the overhead camera. So when you add Metal Gear Solid Two's first person shooting option to Metal Gear Solid One, you can 1, shoot. You can shoot people from basically anywhere you want. Yeah, yeah, and that means like bosses some bosses are completely broken like you don't need to worry about grenades in the tank anymore in fact i think they just straight up expect you to shoot his head from halfway across the bat the battlefield now and Re which you can do yes revolver ocelot is a joke instead of chasing him around the explosive wire traps you just aim your gun stand there and shoot y you aim your gun through the gaps between the wires and just make sure not to shoot the wires because that will blow up the, the, the trap but you can just shoot him in the fucking face and not do the runaround that you would have to do in the PS1 version <laughs> so it was more a matter of the game just not being balanced for the mechanics they added still a fun version though yeah. Metal Gear Solid 4 has great combat um, because, like... Metal Gear, Sol Metal Gear Solid 5 has rocket punch! <laughs> yeah. Metal Gear Solids 4 and 5 have great combat, to the point where you might not want to even bother with stealth, depending on who you are. Um. But, you know... It's it's, it's, it's pretty funny. You, you, you gotta get that big boss rank, right? Yeah. Right. 
Gotta get that infinite ammo headband. <laughs> I, lo I love how two even references that. <laughs> what? Two, two. Not wearing a uh, okay, <laughs> what, two words. And Raiden expresses some concern over Solid Snake's ammo supply at one point, and he just points to his bandana and says, "Infinite ammo." <laughs> it's in the middle of like the most mind trippy part of the game, so it's meant to make you question reality. Um, Metal Gear Solid Two is really meta like that. It was also really meta in the spirit of not having a sequel, so a lot of the impact of it is kind of lost now. But I mean, Metal Gear Solid 2 did have a sequel, though. Yeah, that's what it's... I mean. I mean, they weren't. Yeah. it wasn't supposed to have a sequel when it was made. It was this bizarre avant-garde piece of artsy-fartsy nonsense. The memes, Jack! The memes! <laughs> God damn it. Which, which, which is... It, it, it's sad at how right that game actually was about what would eventually happen. <laughs> when you make Metal Gear Solid have a point, you, you know that things have gone wrong. So, you know. Metal Gear Solid 2 was pretty prophetic in, in, in a way. There are a couple of games that are like that. Like, the original Deus Ex also had a lot of social commentary that proved eventually to be really on point. But, uh... You know, it's interesting. Are you talking about how the Patriots won so many Super Bowls? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, of course... Because I, I don't... Like, I only know the basics when it comes to Metal Gear, because I haven't played any of the games, and so I basically only know stuff from, like memes and memes. let's play <laughs> but it's just like the memes jack the I memes. Always, whenever the patriots get into the super bowl so every year seeing all of the metal gear memes is always really the, the really patriots funny. need to be stopped <laughs> <laughs> uh. has anybody like put tom brady over um big boss's face or something like that tom, oh oh please tom brady is decidedly more evil than big boss I mean, yes, I know, but... Do, do they give you, like, side paths to take just so that you can duck out if you get caught? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, pretty much. They also have, like, health and stuff in them, too. Ha, uh, the S-1000. <laughs> it's, a it's, a it's a liquid metal thing. Uh, oh, I hat. did not. I yeah, didn't get it. Yeah, that was my first thought, too. Uh, ha, <laughs> This is me all being uncultured and having it take you guys to have me get that it's supposed to be a Terminator. Dude, uh, to this day, I still haven't actually watched Terminator 2. I mostly know, I mostly know about it from the Genesis game, if you can believe that. Wow. Yeah. The only Terminator I think I've ever seen is the first one, and that's when we did it. Yes, we yes, yes, did it with us. Yeah. 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 My dad watched that with me when I was like eight, and it's like. Yeah, I suppose it's okay for an eight-year-old to watch The Terminator as long as you fast-forward past the sex scene. You see, my parents were always really strict about that kind of thing, so I didn't really watch any R-rated type stuff until I was a teenager. I have and even then, <laughs> it just so <laughs> happened that my tastes didn't really coincide with, like, horror or slasher type stuff, so... Yeah, I was going to say, it kind of really kind of depended, because, like, I could, like, my parents let me watch, like... Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees stuff because that's all schlocky nonsense. I have no idea why I was allowed to watch the Terminator as a kid because when I was a kid, even the T-Rex in Jurassic Park scared me out of the house. <laughs> I was you a see, wimp. <laughs> like, I think the only R-rated movie I watched before I was 13 was, like, The Matrix. And that's because, and my dad was there and it was just like, do you want to watch The Matrix? I I'm like, had no this is like 12-year-old me being like, but Dad, that's a that's an R-rated movie, Dad. I the, the I don't Matrix know if so, I can the, handle it. The, the Matrix is so good, though. The Matrix, the Matrix is, is pretty good. The Matrix is one of those like movies that sits so close to the fringe of R-rated that like you'd have to see the R rating on the box to know that it was R rated. Yeah, no, it could yeah. it probably would be PG-13 today. Like I don't even really remember them swearing all that much. It, it, might... has, to, it, it has more to do with like a couple bits of like nudity. Yeah, like. Um, it's like one, of those, like like like, one of those yeah, technicality like that out of ratings, yeah. 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 So, yeah. The only other R-rated, the only, like, serious R-rated movie I remember, remember seeing when I was young was um, Schindler's List, but that's kind of a whole different topic. Oh, yeah. And that that's R-rated more because they, like, showed the Holocaust as the Holocaust, so... Yeah. 
Yeah, there was a Diary of Anne Frank movie that I saw in high school when we were doing a World War II uh, thing. Oh, they censored, they, they censored the fuck out of her diary. Yeah, well, it's weird, though, because they... they uh, we, I remember we had to get forms signed for us to watch it because they had nudity in that movie. Like, they, you know, they yeah. showed the whole <laughs> process of them being in the camp and being like strip searched and all that uh, and it was like you had to get the waiver sign in order to watch it and that that reminds me of something that that my high school te my high school english teacher i think did by mistake um we were doing romeo and juliet right so rather than having us read the play which is stupid and has always been stupid uh we were gonna watch this goddamn uh, movie version of it, which was a really good movie is it, version. Is it, is it, is it, is it the Leo, Leo uh, DiCaprio did you one? Watch like the new, did you watch that one? Oh my god. I, I, I don't, yeah, know, I've seen that I don't one. know about the Leo DiCaprio one. I just remember like... It's so bad. Halfway oh. through, there was there was a bit of upper nudity on Juliet's part because they were in bed and, they were, and, and she sits up at one point. And the teacher's like, oh, I forgot this happened. Well, I, I, well, I hope you'll, be, you'll all be mature about it. And it's like, at that point, no. don't oh. say anything. You're just calling attention oh. to it. Oh man, the but man, the Leonardo DiCaprio Romeo and Come Juliet. Come to my sword, handsome as handgun. Yeah, the the they freaking label the the shotgun broadsword. Oh my god, I that that director because not a long time ago I watched Moulin Rouge. A friend uh, basically was oh, like, an, you need to watch another, that. another real another really bad movie. Well, here's the thing: I get why people like Moulin Rouge more than why people like. Romeo and Juliet, because... Well, I mean, I mean, Moulin Rouge is a better movie than Romeo and Juliet, obviously, but... Yeah, but, like, it has an energy to it, you know? It is... Well, it is l l bizarre. Like the, like, like, the Star like the Star Wars prequels, it helps having Ewan McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that is also true, but, you know, just randomly, you'll get to the point where two grown men are singing Madonna's Like a Virgin, and there are, like, two responses that everybody will have. You either have the people who are like, what the fuck am I watching? And then you have the people, like greedily shoving popcorn in their mouths demanding more. So, and it just depends on which side you are, whether or not you like that movie or not. <laughs> You're either asking this, the, what the fuck am I watching in tones of disgust or in tones of delight. But it's always Pretty the same much, question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>